Hey, everyone. I would just want to ask really quickly, what does art mean to you? Don't be shy. Anyone can answer. Creation. Good answers. Well, <laughs> great answers. Well, today I'm going to zone in on one aspect of art, visual art. When we think of the visual arts, we often think of, we often think of disciplines such as drawing, photography, ceramics, sculpture, or even like painting. But these, these aspects of art are actually known as the disciplines of the fine arts, which means art that is created solely for the use of appreciation. Now, I know from personal experience that art is often underappreciated. I mean, look at our own school. We require one arts credit that can be satisfied from either performing arts, music, or simply the visual arts. Now, this general avoidance of art was pretty understandable, considering how, considering how in terms of university entrances, art was often very unpredictable due to the fact that art could be subjective. And then there's also the fact that many people believe that there weren't many careers available in the arts, which in turn meant financial instability in the future. And then you also add into the mix that art materials are often ex expensive. So I get it. So, well, however, nowadays you see many schools such as College of, Fi College of Fine and Applied Arts or School of Architecture, School of Design. Now, one would think, why would a research university, say, for example, Carnegie Mellon or University of Michigan, even bother to have these design fields, especially if they're focused on STEM? Now, let me tell you first off that both University of Michigan and Carnegie Mellon both consistently rank in the top 10 of undergraduate architectural studies. Well, they bother because design is a constantly evolving field. For example, take the driverless Uber, which was recently launched in Pittsburgh due to, well, in thanks to Carnegie Mellon's robotics program. Now, not only did it need consistent programming to work, but it also needed a design that could integrate very cost-effectively into the car. And not only that, but when you, when you're, when you have the, app open on your, the Uber app open on your phone, you can see the planned routes and turns that everyone would plan to take. And then in turn, you would also see the area around you to make sure you have a safe and comfortable ride. Not to mention, there's also a kill switch right next to the gear shift. This kill switch is obviously very important because in case of an emergency, it has to be somewhere easily accessible so, so that you can stop the car. Now, look in your pockets and your bags. I assume most of you, if not all of you, have a, smart, have a smartphone, whether it be, say, a Samsung 7 or an iPhone. Hopefully the latter, because you see, the Samsung 7 did have a design flaw in which it was known to explode. Now, technically, the people who program your phones, they're designers too, if you think about it. Desi they designed the phones for your safety so that you can use it comfortably without having to worry about such a situation happening. Now, do they get paid a lot for this? Well, yes, they do. Or even look at the website, look at the internet. What, what constitutes a good website and a bad website? Well, when I took our school's web design program last course last year, the first assignment we were given was actually to find a good website and a bad website. For the good websites, things that came up were websites such as the ones on the left you can see. So websites that were navigable, navigable simple, easy to use, and had a very clean aesthetic to it. On the other hand, bad websites, they were often overflowed with information and they were very colorful, very sore on the eyes. Not that colorful websites aren't a bad thing, but well, who, who can change a bad website to a good website? Web designers. And do they get paid a lot for what they do? Well, yes they do, they have to code it. Now, this past summer, I visited Cornell University. I visited because I wanted to apply there. I thought it was my first choice because this may sound very artificial, but I thought it was the only Ivy League I could get into. Now, for in terms of Cornell, when we think of what is Cornell known for, oftentimes we think of, say, hotel administration, because they have their own hotel that students can run for a whole weekend. However, when I looked into Cornell, I was actually looking into their architecture program, because their architecture program has actually been ranked number one for consistently for the past two decades. However, my parents they didn't really want me to major in architecture. Well, for one, the program was really hard to get into. And second, they thought I wouldn't be able to be financially stable in the future. So, Instead, instead, I decided to look at the College of Human Ecology, which, in which I actually looked at the design and environmental analysis major. That my parents could settle. So at the time, when I walked into Cornell, basically, there were two other students who were at that information session. One was interested in public health services, and the other student was interested in biology and medicine. Now, the thing is, what happened was basically the admissions director kept talking, and they just, she threw a bunch of biology jargon at them, and I did not understand a single thing. I was completely lost. I was like, why am I here? Like, I don't understand biology. Like, this isn't my sort of thing. But then, however, my dad was really excited. He was like, oh, this is so academic. Like, it's great. There's so much science. 
And then especially when they start talking about how basically there was, a, there was a hospital in which it transmitted germs through its own ventilation system. And through this, well, this anecdote actually scared me out of applying because I was like, oh, that's too much for me. I can't do that. So basically, basically my parents were really excited about this and they're like, okay, yay, design's great. So it took my parents, a college admissions direct, director, to realize that design's actually really important in our, in our lives nowadays. So why exactly is design so important, especially now? Well, if you look at society now, you would see that we have, you would see that the world, the environment is t deteriorating around us. And you can see that, for example, like there's global warming and everything's not going to plan, obviously. So now, well, how do we fix this? We can fix it by design. If you see here that there are like, for example, LED certified buildings, and then there's reusable bags, reusable water bottles. And one of my favorite designs is actually the rooftop and vertical gardens, which actually you can produce oxygen without taking up too much space, which is a great design technique, if you ask me. Now, I suppose what I'm trying to get at today is that design and architecture is not just another fine arts field. It actually opens many opportunities that one wouldn't realize. For one, design's actually a service path, if you think about it. I mean, for example, when you design, you're not des you usually you're not designing for yourself. You're designing for the use of other people so that other people can use your designs and or like move into your building that you design. And additionally, personally, I believe that that design is actually a great way to blend traditional academics and arts. Take web design. For web design, you would need to know how to, how to program and code and do all of that fun stuff. But at the same time, you'd also need to know how to create a website that people would actually like to visit. So it'd have to be easily navigable and simple as we stated what were the properties of a good website earlier. Or even take architecture. Most architecture majors are actually required to take a physics course because you wouldn't want a building to fall on you because of some miscalculations made by an architect. Or even take the book you're reading right now. Like, wouldn't, like imagine if the book had like word, its words scrambled all over the pages and then the cover of the book was actually on the back of the book. Now, that wouldn't be fun to read, would it? Well, what I'm trying to get at is that design is really all around us. And though we don't realize it often, but in terms of, in terms of design, there's like, you have to think about, oh, our environment's like not going well, and then there's like, there's a lot of use of, increase in the use of technology now. So how can we get people to realize that design that is actually disimportant? Well, why do we take an arts credit in the first place? Personally, I'm not sure. Maybe it's important for us to appreciate the art around us. Or maybe as an international school, it's important for us to appreciate the culture around art. Well, personally, I believe that we should replace our arts credit with a design credit. Not that music or the performing arts is not important, but I think that for the visual arts, we could do that. In the design credit, the, the curriculum wouldn't be focused so much on the aesthetics of the art. Sure, aesthetics are great, but maybe it's not the most important thing when it comes to design. Rather, it would be focused more on the practicality, the purpose, and the research that goes behind it. I actually took our school's product design and development course last year, in which basically, it's kind of as an arts credit, surprisingly, because when I walked in, I was expecting to do art because, well, it's an arts credit. However, what happened was basically I spent most of the time just researching and interviewing clients. Like I would have to ask people, oh, what would you want in a cutting board? What would you want in a chair? And then like through that, I would have to, through that, I would have to try to compile my information to try to create a design solution. Or even I would have to research online and search up, say, what has been done with a cutting board? What has been done with a chair? So that my design wouldn't potentially be redundant. Now through this, I think I learned a lot because it was probably the most research I've ever done through interviewing other people and online. And also, I think I learned that there's a lot more to the design process behind, there's, there's a lot more to the design process rather than just the art. Now, hopefully, if you take away anything from my talk today, let it be these two things, that A, does, that A art is not just about the aesthetics, and B, does, B design is crucial, is, is crucial in our society today. Thank you. <laughs>